Hey everyone, it's Baka here. Welcome to episode number 8 of the Wide World of Geek, where we look at the news and new items in the world of geek. This week I've got a number of topics to talk about. Uh, the first is a sad note. Yesterday, August 12th, comic book legend Joe Kubert passed away. Uh, Kubert was known primarily in comics for his work on the Hawkman comic as well as Sergeant Rock. Sergeant Rock was probably his best known work. He worked on it for decades. Uh, a few years ago he had a series come out or a mini series that was absolutely excellent. His style, not necessarily changing over the years, but evolving along with the storytelling to create rich characters, great action, and just showing a wealth of the knowledge that he had for comics. He's also He was also the founder of the Kubert School, formerly known as the Joe Kubert School of Cartoon and Graphic Art. This was a school basically where if you wanted to learn how to be a comic book artist, you could go here and not get a four-year bachelor's degree. I'm not sure what it is now. But you could be trained by comic book artists of note, including... Joe Kubert himself, and his sons, Andy and Adam Kubert, who are huge in the world of comic book art and have been for as long as I've been reading comics. Actually, the first comic I started reading as a true comic book collector was X-Men number 25, uh, the first part of, oh, what was that? I don't remember now. Uh, basically, it is the comic where Wolverine gets his adamantium skeleton ripped out of him by Magneto, and Professor Xavier wipes Magneto's mind. It set up a lot of the comics that would follow in the late 90s, the Onslaught storyline, Heroes Reborn, and set a lot of friction within the X-Men. And This was done by Andy Kubert. Now, at the same time, the comic that was the follow-up to the story immediately happening after this was Wolverine number 75, which was done by his brother Adam Kubert. Both of these men are great comic book artists in their own right, and you can definitely tell that their initial style comes from their father. Uh, Mr. Kubert will be missed by everyone in the comic book community, by creators and fans alike. And we wish his family peace and goodwill in this time of sorrow for them. Now, moving on to other comic book news. Let me just click this. Marvel has been revealing covers for their Marvel Now initiative for some of the number one and number two issues they've been coming out with. And the one that really kind of made me giggle a little bit, if I giggled, would be the cover for FF number one. Now, FF does not mean Fantastic Four, it means Future Foundation. However, it was basically the comic that the Fantastic Four became after it appeared that the Human Torch died. They created the Future Foundation. It was a story that really centered around Franklin and Valeria Richards, uh, Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman's children, as well as their little mutant and alien friends, some little scrolls, and uh, at least Artie. I don't remember if Leech was part of that. Uh, Artie and Leech being from the X-Men family of comics and having been longtime friends of Franklin Richards. Uh, but the FF in the Marvel Now stories is going to be led by Ant-Man. It's going to star She-Hulk. It will also have Medusa from the Inhumans and a character called She-Thing, which 
is being described as a human girl in a thing suit. It's really kind of funny looking because it's this girl with pink hair, and then the rest of her body is the thing. She's obviously in this, but it's so absolutely ridiculous looking. I kind of want to pick it up just to see what it's all about. It's going to be illustrated by Mike Allred from Madman and X-Force and x -Statics. So it should have a lot of whimsy to it. Um, in other comic book news, Invincible number 100 is coming pretty soon. And if it is anything like The Walking Dead number 100 was, it should have a really major twist. Robert Kirkman writes both of these in Walking Dead number 100. Spoiler alert if you don't know anything about this or are afraid of it. Uh, Robert Kirkman goes on to kill one of his major characters, a very big fan favorite. Not, uh, not the main character Rick or his son, because let's face it, they've faced enough death in their family, but an equally lo beloved character, if not more beloved. Uh, there have been some, there have been, there's been a teaser that was put out, I believe, today or yesterday. Today. Um, and it has got a very bloodied and beaten Invincible missing a tooth under a pile of rubble, and beside it it says, the death of, dot, dot, dot. Does this mean the death of Invincible? Does it mean the death of somebody else? They've teased things like this in Invincible before. We thought that he was dead. He ended up being crippled for a long time. And basically having one of the other heroes kind of replace him doing what he does. It looked like they'd killed off his girlfriend, Adam Eve. Uh, she got better. So we'll see what happens there. Now, in comic book movie news, it has been confirmed that Joss Whedon will be writing and directing Avengers number Avengers 2. Number 2. Avengers 2, the sequel to the third most... the third highest grossing movie of all time. But he is also going to be helping out with, in some form or another, for a new Marvel Comics television show. Now, there's already one television show for Marvel Comics in the work, and that's going to be The Hulk. And it's going to be headed up by Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, notable for the Hellboy movies, for... Uh, the Pan's Labyrinth and for the uh, upcoming movie Pacific Rim. It doesn't appear that Whedon is going to have anything to do with the Hulk, which makes it's making everybody wonder what the TV project is that Whedon's going to be working on. Now, Newsarama.com did a very fun little countdown or speculation, and I'm going to read off their top ten, from ten to number one. So starting off, their speculation is Moon Knight. Now, of the top ten, this has the least amount of possibility. I don't see a Moon Knight series happening or working. The comic rarely works. Number nine is Doctor Strange. This one has been rumored for a long time. A Doctor Strange movie's been rumored. This could be pretty cool. You could get a house meets... Avengers type of deal, but maybe a little too high budget. Number eight was AKA Jessica Jones. This was a comic originally called Alias. Obviously the television show can't be called that because of the Jennifer Garner Alias show. Basically Jessica Jones is an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. slash former agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. She's currently married to Luke Cage aka Power Man and they have a child together. But it's a very dark and gritty kind of spy series. Spy, uh, or... Actually, I'm not sure if she's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. or a private detective. I know she's formerly a superhero. I'm just great with all this information, aren't I? Uh, number seven was Heroes for Hire. That could be pretty fun, depending on your lineup. Number six was Mockingbird. This would be kind of a... Really slick, female, James Bond, spy type uh, show. 
this could work really well, I think, but I don't think they want to bring Mockingbird into any of the Avengers movies because she's really not that popular of a character. She was out of comics for years, thought dead, apparently just kidnapped by scrolls because everybody was. Number five, Cloak and Dagger. I hate this idea. I've never been a fan of these characters, and I hope it doesn't see the light of day. Number four is Avengers Academy. Think Teenage Avengers, not your actual Avengers, but kids with superpowers. These just happen to possibly become villains in the future. I don't know. Uh, number three is Runaways. This would be amazing. Kids with superpowers. Their parents are all supervillains. They run away. The parents all die. They're betrayed by one in their midst. And then they bounce around the country. They get a couple new members, lose a couple members. It's an excellent book. Whedon wrote an major arc on this. It wasn't the best received, but he absolutely loved these characters. I don't think there's anyone for him to kill, though, in this. They're kids. That'd be bad. Uh, number two is Sword. This is another Joss Whedon creation. Uh, Sword is the space version of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's affiliated with S.H.I.E.L.D., or it's an offshoot of S.H.I.E.L.D. This was created in Joss Whedon's Astonishing X-Men run. This could be cool. It would be very much in the tone of things like he did with Firefly, which is my all-time favorite show. I have it on DVD and Blu-ray. I should probably get rid of those DVDs. Um, and I'm currently re-watching it on Blu-ray. But the number one idea, or the number one possibility that Newsarama thinks is possible is S.H.I.E.L.D. A series about S.H.I.E.L.D. You could have appearances by Samuel L. Jackson and Snake Fury. You could have appearances by the Avengers. But you could have a really cool spy-type show. Secret agents, you know, all these characters. And there are tons of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters that get fairly good note in the Marvel comic universe. Now you can start bringing these guys in here. And even that can lead to some offshoots. You could have Jessica Drew in there also known as Spider-Woman, because she's been rumored to possibly be in Avengers 2. There's a ton of stuff that Spider-Woman could do within a S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, a S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series. Uh, I would really like that. I'd also really like Runaways. Either one of those, I'll be happy. Now, outside of gaming news, or outside of comic news, I've got to do this really quickly because I'm already at 13 minutes. This weekend is Gen Con Indianapolis. This is a large uh, tabletop and RPG gaming convention. Uh, I will actually be attending on Saturday. This is my first Gen Con. And if I'm lucky, they'll let me do some interviews, do some videotaping, and I can put that in next week's Wide World of Geek. Um, I'm going to be attending three, uh, two or three different seminars on game design and creating your own game, since I'm working on creating my own game right now. But it's something I'm really looking forward to, and I will let you guys know next week whether or how it goes, and hopefully I will be able to have some footage. Who knows? If not, it's because Gen Con said no. But tune in this Friday for the last part on perspective drawing from the Friday workshops. And until next week, I will be back with some Gen Con news, but I will see you guys later. Bye.